Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, hi, my name is Angela Sihamba. If you're a Shen subscriber, hi love, thank you so much for coming back and always supporting my channel. Um, yeah, as you can see from the title of the video, this is going to be a chit chat about my journey. This is my second time recording this video. Before we get to the main objective of this video the main reason of this video i just want to explain why i decided to talk about this today one of my main one of my goals for 2020 is to be consistent on youtube so the past two two three videos i recorded them i think mid jan most of them and then I just kept on my laptop and then I just kept editing and editing and then yeah. But now I'm running out of the videos that I recorded. Which means um, if I don't record this video I might miss a week of not um, uploading a video. And I don't want that this year. I just want to try and be as consistent as I can. So yeah. Um, the reason why I'm not able to shoot proper proper content right now is because as much as right now you can see me I have makeup on I look cute this is actually the first time I have makeup on in about I think in about two weeks I think by the end of this week this today is the 18th of Feb yes today is the 18th of Feb by the end of this week it would have been I think three weeks without putting on makeup without um yeah I've just been playing Jane every single day. I've been in the house. I haven't been going anywhere. Um, and the reason why I haven't been going anywhere or doing my makeup is because I've been having a big ass bandage on my face. I actually just removed it for this video today. And I decided to record a video. But immediately after recording this, I do need to put it back. Um, and I'll get to explain why I have the bandage. But I'll insert a clip somewhere to show you how... I've been looking the past three weeks um, and then I just wore a turtleneck because I don't apply makeup like on this region because that's why I usually have a bandage on so I really didn't want to put makeup and just mess up the situation down here. The main purpose of this video also just to show you guys that God is good and I do think you know life isn't always great you know things happen we fall ill um, life is not always great so it is I feel like it is important for us to share some parts of life um, with one another and not be afraid instead of just always showing the good side of things uh, I'm not saying right now I'm in, I'm crying I'm not gonna cry on camera I'm not gonna um, be dramatic about it but I'm just gonna talk about my experience and how it's been the, my journey so far and what I've learned and yeah so this video might actually end up being long I knew that eventually I'd have to talk about this on my channel um, or at least I had planned that I would talk about this um, on my channel but I thought it would happen at a later stage um, probably sometime this year but probably towards the end of the year um, for the reason that I just thought maybe I'll record it once I'm cleared off um, by the doctors and blah 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 but now because now i am not able to record videos well the video that i would like to record because i always have the bandage on i just thought you know what maybe it's time for me to just talk about it um and just get it out of the way you know so yeah i am going to talk about as you can see from the title i don't know what i'm gonna name this video actually because i just feel like if i say if I name it as my cancer journey, that's going to be so scary if somebody read it. So I don't know what I'm going to name um, this video. But yeah, I'm going to take you guys through my journey um, from the time that I first got diagnosed with cancer um, to today. Um, so yeah, when I take it back all the way to 2018 where everything started happening um, to today, which is 2020 obviously. Um, so yeah. I thought I wouldn't be able to record this video in one sitting last week when I first tried it but I realized that I, uh, I can, I'm strong enough to do this so yeah let's go. 
Um, okay, so what had happened was <laughs> I was doing my last semester, my last semester at school in varsity. Uh, I started developing a small. I'm gonna try and speed through this story because, or else we're gonna spend the whole day here, and I don't want us to spend the whole day here. When I was studying, it was my accounting and finance degree. I started developing a small. I got a small. Um, what can I say? Small sore or small wound on my, at the back of my tongue. It started, I think, in March. I was too busy in school. I didn't have time. Well, I felt like I didn't have time to go to the doctor because you know it's my last semester. I need to focus. And I was like, ah, it's probably just a small little thing it will disappear in a week or two or whatever i just thought you know what this is something that's gonna pass maybe i bit myself maybe i eat something that like irritated my tongue so i really didn't think much into it but it was very painful it was very slow yeah fast forward i think about three weeks later it was still there it was now getting very painful so i think april then i thought you know what or oh, april may yeah end of april then i said you know what let me go see a doctor let me go to her family doctor i went to her she checked it out she was like okay fine we think it might be a fungal infection she gave me some i think she gave me a cream and some medication she's like okay take this it should probably disappear afterwards and i was like okay great i took them i went back to my studying i pushed school whatever whatever and then it after i think once i was done with the medication it still didn't disappear so but i still feel like i didn't have time because now it was me and i was writing my exams at the end of may and i was busy i'm um, working on assignments and i was like you know i don't really have time to go to the family doctor again because she was all the way in politani and i was and school was like by fairground so i was like that distance i can't so i decided to just then go to a doctor somewhere close to my house and then i went to mri and then I went to the doctor there because 24 hours, I think I went to the guy probably in the evening, one of the days after school. I went there, I went to see him and then he was like, okay, I think this might be a fungal infection. And then he also gave me some pills. I took them. I still finished the, the treatment. They didn't work out. And then I was like, you know what, I'm just going to focus on my exams. I'm going to worry about this when I'm done with school because I need to get this degree. I really need to get this degree. So I finished my exams, great, and then after that, it was still there, it was still very painful. I I knew that I had to go and see a specialist, it's something that I discussed with my mom, something that I discussed with my dad, my boyfriend, um, just people around me. It's something that I knew I had to do, I had to go and see a specialist, um, but then I was just too stressed, I was just like, this thing is stressing me out. So I took a couple of weeks, because I had just finished school, so I was like, okay. I told myself I want to relax first, maybe for about two weeks, just chill at home with no stress. And then from then, that's when I'll go to a specialist. End of June, July, so I went to, an, to see an ENT. Um, and then I got to him, he saw it, he said, okay, probably, I, I'm thinking it might be a fungal infection, great. Um, and then, yeah, he gives me some medication. I think the treatment that he, the medication he gave me, I had to take it for a longer period compared to two doctors that I had went to prior um, I took them for I think a month I think it was a month um, he said if it what he said was if it doesn't disappear after a month I'm gonna have to take a sample of your tongue take it for tests and then blah 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 right great we are using the medication it seems I think like two weeks in it shows that it's disappearing three weeks in it's disappearing four weeks it's like completely gone like it's going the minute I stopped taking the medication when they were finished, um, literally the next day it came back like it never left and it was like inflamed, it was painful AF, it was just the ghetto, it was the pits. So I went back to him, I think beginning, sometime in August I went back to him and then I was like, yo bro, <laughs> this thing is not disappearing, what's happening? He was like, okay fine, um, like I said, we're gonna have to take a little sample little piece of your tongue take it for test yada 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 so and then um he, I, I went that day i went to the hospital alone so he literally took i felt him take a little piece of my tongue i think he took two pieces of it where the saw was and then he took them for test and he was like okay i'm gonna need you to come back in for this amount of time and then 
we'll see the way forward. So, um, the time that I was supposed to go and get my result was supposed to be the Friday of my birthday. So my birthday is on the 8th of September. And that year, my birthday, in 2018, my birthday was on a Friday. So my birthday comes, my best friend came over to sleep at my house on Thursday. I drove to the hospital with my best friend and then my boyfriend met us there. And then what happened? Oh, and then I went to see the doctor and then he was like, no, I don't have your results. Please come back next week. Um, but I was like, you know what? It's fine. It's Independence Week and I'm going to have a good time. I want to turn up from Friday to Tuesday because that was the long holiday. I was like, I'm good. So, chapeau. It's the following week now. This thing is still very painful. It's inflamed. It's on fire, literally. Um, but I don't think it was getting any big. I don't think it was getting big. Mm. So then the following week, the following Friday, which was the 5th of October, I wake up on that Friday, I tell my mom, um, oh, by the way, when all of this was happening, I was still unemployed. I was still searching for a job. You know the unemployment situation in bots, it's the ghetto. So I was still unemployed, so I had all the time in the world. So I woke up that day and I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the doctor now. The morning when I woke up, I was wondering why my mom wasn't at work. But I was okay, whatever. So I tell my mom, I'm like, Mama, I'm gonna go to the hospital because my boyfriend is gonna come pick me up and then go together. So then my mom was like, okay. Then my mom was like, wait, the doctor called us yesterday and said that we have to all come to the hospital. So in my head, I'm like, so then I'm like, what? What do you mean? She's like, the doctor called your dad yesterday and asked for all of us to come to the hospital today to get the results as a family. And I was like, what? Why didn't you guys tell me? So I'm like, why didn't you guys tell me? She's like, obviously I could tell she didn't know what to say to me. So now I'm like, okay, fine. Well, I've already told um, Bobo to come and pick me up. So I'm going to have to go and tell him that I'm going with you guys instead. So obviously I'm confused AF. And now a lot of those are running in my head. So I go outside. I get into the car. I'm like, yo, bro. I know the doctor called my parents yesterday. So now, um... I'm gonna have to go with them to the hospital so because I'm shocked and I'm like I didn't expect my mom to tell me that we're all gonna um, get these results as a family I'm there and now paranoid AF I'm starting to cry because I'm like why do we need the whole family to come and get my results so now I'm like freaking out I start crying I think that my mom kind of figured must have felt that I was probably crying outside because she came out and then she was like comforting me and she was like don't worry everything's gonna be fine um and then she's like okay please take her to the mall for a couple of for like an hour her dad's gonna knock off at this time blah, blah, blah so you guys will meet us at the hospital shop I leave we go to the I think we were like going to KFC to get food or something I was stressed I was crying but then I stopped at some point we got to the hospital shop but I think around half 11. When we got there, there were so many patients waiting to see the doctor. But the minute he saw us, he literally made us like jump in front of everybody. Like we were like, So then we went inside. That man did not waste time. He definitely did not waste time. He did not, time. He did not beat around the bush. He just got straight to the point. <clears throat> we sat down. He was like, okay. But Zadi, this is what happened. Uh, we he was just breaking down he was basically just telling them what we had went through like the medication the four weeks of medication then we took this then it wasn't healing then the treatment I mean then he, he had to take the sample and then he said we did agree that if it doesn't heal I'm gonna have to take a sample so now the results are out and then he was like a baholo it was out to um, he literally said it like that. He said it in Setswana. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I'm the only one who feels like when things are said in Setswana, they are more scary and more, like, they're more strong. <laughs> so she, he was like, Kika and Kira. Oh, guys, my heart dropped to the floor. I immediately started crying. I looked at my parents, my dad's eyes were popping out of his head shocked like what my mom was there my mom was strong obviously to my mom um 
because they're asking questions and what 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 okay shall um, and then the doctor was like okay fine um i do feel like we really need to get her we need to book her for surgery as soon as we can because we don't know how aggressive it is so the quicker we get her um operated the better and he was like now we're gonna he then said i'm gonna we're gonna need to go to other doctors in the hospital to get their opinion and then afterwards we're gonna have to book her in for a for surgery it was friday by the way from there literally i was crying we ran off we came office office we're now going from um office to office seeing the older um doctors and then and they're all like yeah no definitely it's a good it's a good you're making the right decision yada 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 and then from there i had to go do my i had to get an ultrasound i had to get x-rays and that same day literally after finding out i had to go and do ultrasounds and um x-rays and ct scans and all of that and then and my boyfriend was like following us the whole time and he was like what is happening why are you cry what's happening he was like confused and then obviously i told him he was devastated as well and then um by the end of the our uh, by the end of the scans and everything the doctor was like i have an opening on monday we're gonna have to take it on monday for surgery we're gonna remove a portion of your tongue and we're going to obviously take more than where the tumor is um and yeah so monday the 8th of october i was in hospital in the morning, I by I think by the surgery done. I think it took about two hours. I had stitches from my tongue to the from the back of my tongue all the way here, and yeah, and that's what happened. Oh my God! What literally 21, 22 minutes. This is bad. So yeah, from there, okay, fine. I got to go through. Oh, by the way, the weekend that after the day that i found out um i w went and went to see my friends um i visited my close friends to tell them face to face because i didn't i didn't really have time to tell everyone and i don't want to tell the ones that were are like, in gaps i don't want to tell them through the phone so i just decided to just visit them um and tell them face to face so i went to two of my close friends i went to peggy's and maya's house and then i also went to my cousin's house and I just told them face to face, I'm like, yo guys, I'm going for surgery, whatever. Obviously, it was a very emotional day, we were all crying, we were all devastated. And then the other people, I managed to tell them over the phone. Um, and then, yeah. Saturday and Sunday, we had to get booked for, um, to see a counsellor just to, you know, prepare us for what was coming, to prepare us for surgery, prepare us for life after surgery, to prepare us just for life after being diagnosed with cancer you know um uh, but god was so good i was supposed to be in the hospital for a week um luckily for me um by wednesday which was so perfect because it was my little sister's birthday by the 10th of october i was out of the hospital three days out which was incredible um the first day I was able to speak and the doctors didn't think that I would be able to speak for a couple of days or even eat um, like solids but I think by the second day I was eating meat and even my if my family was just shocked I was even shocked my tongue was very swollen I was swollen on the side as well um, but I was able to speak um, just I was just shocked God is amazing and the whole time I was not scared because I know God, God is always with me and I know everything happens for a reason but at the end of the day God has a much bigger plan for for me so the whole time I was like you know what Angela God got you like you have nothing to worry about so and then fast forward December I went for a pet scan in South Africa great um I am moving on with my life um and then now 2019 July no I think probably June or beginning July, I started developing some sort of bump. Little, like, there was a growth, like, underneath my, just by my chin. Um, I'll link a video um, where I did show you guys, because um, I recorded a, a vlog. I uploaded a vlog um, the weekend before I was going to go in for another surgery, for my second surgery. 
um, but I did start end up end up growing um, a young, not really a lump. Maybe okay, maybe now that I think about it, it was on this side. So I went back to my doctor, and I was like, "Yo, bro, this is like there's something growing here." And then he was like, "Okay, I'm suspecting it might be a salivary gland. Maybe it's blocked, um, because he did see that the first surgery is going to affect my salivary glands." Um, okay, great. Um, what happened from there? Um, then he was like, he gave me some antibiotics because he thought maybe it has an infection or anything like that. He stayed for a week. After a week, it didn't disappear. I was going to have to go in for another surgery after the holiday, the long weekend. Because um, he did say that um, he's thinking of just removing it once and for all. And he was just suspecting that that is going to open a little hole. Just a tiny hole, get it out, get whatever was happening out, and then shut. So the following week, I think, now during the surgery, the doctor then discovered that um, next to the gland that was blocked, there was a lump that was growing. Um, obviously, that took him by surprise. He took the lump for a test. And the lump came back out cancer and this time around it had moved to the, the first one that they took out was still from my tongue was the second stage and then this um, um, this lump that they found again here was on the on stage two as well so obviously that took them by surprise and they didn't expect that so immediately and I think they found out the results in like a few days after my surgery so when we went back for checkup, I think, because I didn't, I think I stayed a day or two in the hospital. I think I stayed a day or two in the hospital, my second surgery. I didn't stay long, um, because like I'm saying, it was just a small um opening. Um, and I did um upload some videos. I'm sure you would have seen them where I I had the little, yeah. Anyway, so and then what happened? And then. When I went for a checkup now, I think a few days later, um, then the doctor told me, in the following week, the doctor then tells us that, um, that's when he told us that they found the lump and the lump had cancer and it was on stage two. And then he was like, you know what, now we're going to have to go in for another surgery because now we're going to need to um, remove a, the bigger part or the bigger section where we got the lump from just to reduce the chances of the cancer coming back um, in that area so I think before the second surgery even healed obviously because that was just like three four days after I'm um, leaving the hospital I was getting booked in for another surgery on the first I think it was probably the first of August because I remember Around the, the 1st of August or somewhere there, or the 2nd, yeah, I, I do know that I, I had another vlog that I recorded where I had lunch with my friends. Um, so I was booked in for my third surgery, which is the biggest one. I, ha I literally have a scar from here all the way here. I can't, I can't show you guys here because, like I said, there's a situation underneath here. So I went in for that surgery. Now that one was way bigger than all, all the other two. Um, I was in hospital for I think three, four days. Um, I had tubes obviously going out of my 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 neck. Um, um, but luckily the pain wasn't. That I had all my three surgeries. I was I didn't experience pain. At the hospital and even afterwards I've only been experiencing pain the past these couple of months um, third um, and hopefully last surgery that I had to go through um, then I was still unemployed by the way throughout all of these three surgeries I was still looking and looking for jobs I was applying every week um, and then a week after leaving the hospital I got a call from internship government internship government internship to start in Gabs of course uh, I because I struggled so much to find a job I decided to go um, I decided to just jump to it and 
go to work a week after leaving the hospital now looking at it it was not a good idea because me not allowing my body to heal has caught up on me now now i've, ta I've taken a break from internship because now my body was not healing a week after leaving the hospital um which was like i said my surgery i think was on the 1st of august or the 2nd somewhere there i started internship on the 8th of august i was going for to work with a whole big ass um what is it stitched up chin obviously you can't see it because it's below me it's underneath and every time i would always make sure that people don't really see but i had stitches i still had the threads um still on my neck and chin i just used to make sure that when i was talking to people i would always make sure that i don't lift my head too high for them to see you would only see if i say yo by the way do you see that i had surgery or whatever but i literally went to settle work on the 8th of august because i was like you know what angela you've been on prayer for from may 2018 till august 2019 it had been over a year of me being unemployed and did you know how stressful that is so i was like i will not make the mistake of leaving this opportunity um then two weeks in towards the end of august i found out from the doctors that i would have to go through radiation and chemo um and this was just for them to just reduce the chances of the cancer coming back so now i thought that i found that out end of october um yeah end of october i mean end of august sorry um so now i had to move from seeing my ent to move to the oncology clinic now 